Are you recording already? Yeah. What? Okay, so am I watching? <laughs> um, it's not Star Wars. I'm on Wikipedia right now, just trying to figure out like what Star Trek's about. Uh, <laughs> I'll do that again. People in space who try to bring peace or something to the universe? Is it like this? Uh, the guy George Takai 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 is a play. This so. Star Trek, created by Gene Roddenberry, continues to be a timeless and iconic series today. But why and how has it managed to do so? Why does it continue to capture the hearts and imagination of people? And how does everybody seem to know at least something about it? It's very exciting to be part of Star Trek and part of history, really. I mean, this is something that's going to certainly outlive any of us. Which is sort of a strange feeling. I cannot believe how popular this next myth is. Yeah, fans have been requesting it for years. And when I announced that we were doing this on the internet, the reaction was massive. You're talking about the Gorn episode of Star Trek. <laughs> Enterprise, three to beam up. You're getting reception? Yeah, mine's real. If you don't really watch Star Trek yourself, you don't really know how huge the audience is for it. People are coming out of the woodwork that I never knew watched Star Trek. Star Trek had relationships and conflict among the relationships and stories that involved humanity and, and philosophical questions which were dramatized at huh? their best. Did you beat the world record this morning? No, world record. A world record. And I don't think anyone born in the last half of the 20th century doesn't know about Star Trek. Uh, whether they watch it or not, they're certainly aware of it. In the 1950s, when Star Trek first came out, it was not particularly popular, but it had a huge impact in that there is a black female actress, Michelle Nichols, playing Uhura in a leading role. Martin Luther King was still preaching equality between races. In fact, Mr. King was a Star Trek fan, and when they met, she told him she was considering quitting her role for a Broadway opportunity. Mr. King was so upset at the idea that he managed to convince her to change her mind and remain on Star Trek. Star Trek was popularized as TV's first interracial kiss. The Prime Directive has idealistic implications in that people can visit other planets for exploration and science rather than colonization. Another dazzling product of Star Trek was the futuristic technology. For instance, Talking to computers is now almost a reality with Siri. Uhura's earpiece also captivated people, leading to the development of the Bluetooth earpiece today. Tablet computers as well started out as pads on Star Trek. Not to mention the cell phone. The not so subtly named StarTac flip phone in 1996, and then the form factor took off. Chances are your cell phone no longer flips, unless you're my sister, but it's still a pretty good representation of the magic handheld communications tech Star Trek first showed us more than 45 years ago. FaceTime, Skype, and video calling have opened up because of Star Trek. Finally, research is already underway in cloaking devices, transparent aluminum, and even warp drives. So I used to watch Star Trek quite a bit a few years ago when I actually had time to watch TV, but I don't have time. The I thought the stories were great. So and I, you know the infusion of a little bit of science with a little bit of strange new stuff was always very interesting. I think it sparks their imagination. Star Trek is certainly has legs. Like I like space and exploration, and there are, there are lots of things about it that are funny, and I can see my reflection in the camera and distorting my face. Since. Uh, a relatively young age. The first show I watched was Star Trek Voyager. Probably watched a good chunk of those. It's an adventure show and people like adventure and it's not like crazy complicated and it's not like it's like you can miss an episode and catch up on it. But it's just it's it's a classic thing and lots of people are also attracted to that idea. I like Star Trek because I I like science fiction. And I like science fiction because it's it can be an escape from the real world, like all literature, but it, I find that science fiction for me does a better job of putting me into uh, a different um, a different mindset. Much more uh, endearing to me about the simplicity of that 
original series. Voyager is my series. I love a Voyager. I think it's just the most amazing thing ever. Put a bunch of people on a starship, send them off to a remote corner, and it takes forever to get home. And I think Janeway kicks ass. Come on. <laughs> She's the best. So I think, um, but I, you know, Star Trek is really cool because it, you know, I love the fact that they don't have money, that they're actually out there like not colonizing people, but like getting to know people. I love the Prime Directive. Uh, Zephram Cochrane, kind of crazy guy, you know, not, not hot on him, but everything else, fantastic show. Space, a final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Live long and prosper.